This Sunday marks the start of the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. But this year is pretty special, and here to talk the significance is Rabbi Chaim Lazaroff with the Shabbat of Houston. Good morning, and thanks for being here. Good morning. It's nice to be back in studio with you. Uh, look, can you explain exactly what is Rosh Hashanah and the significance of it? So Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. This year is 5,783 years since Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day of creation. Each year we celebrate humanity and think about what can we do for the coming year to make it into a better year for ourselves and the world around us. How long does it last? It lasts for two days. It starts on Sunday night and goes for 48 hours through Tuesday night. We have traditional foods, we have honey cake, and uh, the apples dipped in honey. We eat a pomegranate filled with seeds. We should have a year full of good deeds. Of course, we light the holiday traditional candles, and we always wish each other a happy Jewish New Year. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of horns with you. What do they signify, and, and why are they used? So the central um, action that we do on the Jewish holiday is we blow in the synagogue, we blow the shofar with a certain specific sounds, and a shofar needs to be from a kosher animal and from an animal that is not drilled out but hollowed out. So like this is a goat's horn, it's a kosher mm -hmm. animal, and the cartilage is softened up and then removed from the horn. And for someone who doesn't understand what a kosher animal is, can you explain that? So it says in the, in the Bible, in the Torah, that a kosher animal needs to have split hooves and chew its cud. And mm -hmm. usually those are the more docile cattle that are kosher, mm -hmm. and the wild animals are generally not. Mm -hmm. So you have deer, cow, etc. that mm -hmm. can be kosher. A cow is also kosher but can't be used for a shofar. This is a, you know, a cow's horn mm -hmm. or a bull horn. Mm -hmm. um, they can't be used for a shofar because they need to be drilled out and it reminds us of the sin of the golden calf that happened in the desert that was in defiance of the belief in one God. Are you going to give us a little bit of a demonstration as to how the shofar is used? If you would like one. Sure. sure. Okay. Well, I'd like a demonstration of, of how, you know, how we eat this type of cake, but we'll go to the horns instead. <laughs> <laughs> the they will do the horn. So th this is a, also a, from a, a kudo. It's a, it's a kosher animal, mm -hmm. and it's also it's the cartilage removed. And there's three types of sounds that are made. There's a long sound, three short sounds, and nine shortest sounds, and then a long sound again. And those sounds each represent another kind of sobbing, another kind of yearning mm -hmm. of how I want to correct my ear. And so you'll hear a long sound, three short sounds, nine shortest sounds, and then a long sound that goes as long as we can go. Because sometimes it comes from the hard times, mm -hmm. it comes to the w widest of times. And if we can come out on the Jewish New Year long and strong, we'll have a good year coming so up ahead. So the longer the better. Yes, longer the All better. Right. Well, All right, well, get going and let's, let's see, see how, how this works. Let's see how long we can go. All right. <laughs> That was long. Yes. I think it's going to be a prosperous new year. Uh, amen. That was <laughs> nice. <laughs> it, but, but, off. Yeah. Was it hard to learn how to do that? It's a bit like blowing a trumpet, uh -huh. and it makes only obviously a single sound, but it's not so hard. Fascinating. Yes. Well, thank you for yes. sharing. It's very yes. special. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. And have a happy new year after all. And to please join um, Chabad all over the city all right. for Rosh Hashanah services, where any of you Jew is welcome to come here to the all show right. far. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. All right. We're going to check in with Nate.